Hello everybody, my name is Erica, an artist from Michigan and a soon-to-be graduate of Kendall College of Art and Design in their illustration department. I am currently working alongside of Alexa Carabin as her apprentice. We have been working together for about a year now and are very excited to release our first collaboration. It's a unique collaboration between the two of us and I'd like to share with you the process behind it. One thing that I think is very important when talking about a new artwork is the time that it was created during and the inspiration behind that piece. In the fall of 2020, I was given an assignment in my class. The assignment was to create a two-layer screen print based on the word empowerment. I was so excited to take my first printmaking class at Kendall College of Art and Design and I came up with this idea there where we further developed it at Alexa's studio as she is also a printmaker. Now a lot has been going on and a lot was going on, especially in those couple of months. I decided to draw inspiration of empowerment from the blue heron. Living in Michigan, lakes, rivers, and bodies of water are very familiar to us. So blue herons are a bird that we see pretty often. They are quite magnificent and they have a true meaning behind their life and I'd like to share it with you. Blue herons symbolize self-determination as they spend their entire life wading through murky waters and being persistent in their catch. Their long legs symbolize stability and the connection that they have to the earth as they stand on them all day long waiting for their food to pass. So for this first layer of the print, I wanted to create a gritty, textured, murky feeling background that was more of a natural abstract look. To do this, I used a printmaking process called monotype. A monotype is a unique way of printing that provides a different result every single time. Whether you're changing the colors of the inks or paints that you're using or the textures or the material that you even put the paint on to pull the print from. Each one is different and you could consider each one a different piece of art on its own. The end result of the prints that you will be seeing soon are mono prints. They are closely related to monotypes, but each one retains the same imagery. They just vary slightly. So for that first layer, I used a monotype and I scanned it in on my scanner bed to digitize it, as well as scanning some found objects into my computer. Once I had the image on my computer, I took it into Photoshop and I used a blending layer that would blend away certain textures and areas of this print so that there was a transparency there. You could kind of see through this monotype. As funny as it may sound, I had these grasses growing outside of my apartment that I had been admiring for a couple weeks because they looked like grasses that you would buy to put in a vase. They were almost like prairie grasses, but they resembled the reeds that you might see growing out of the water. In true artist practice, I decided to rip them up and use them for an art project. <laughs> I used my scan of them and applied a blending mode onto them in Photoshop, so the image was now turned into a transparent registration of the shape of the reeds. You can see that a little bit here. The second layer of the print is the heron itself. The second layer acts as the detail layer. I wanted this layer to stand alone or add to the monotype that it would be printed on top of. To do this, I used my drawing tablet in Photoshop and I drew a digital drawing on top of the monotype. Now, since we're screen printing these layers, I will take you through a little bit of what screen printing is as well. Screen printing is the process of printing through a mesh screen. It's usually attached to a metal or a wood frame. 
And to transfer your drawing onto the screen or get it ready to print, you have to apply a photo emulsion to the screen. Once a photo emulsion is applied to the screen, it is light sensitive. So anywhere where the light hits it is going to cure. The act of getting your drawing on the screen is usually used with a transparency sheet that your drawing is on. When you layer the transparency sheet underneath the screen and apply the light through it, anywhere where the light can shine through then cures. This leaves your drawing as the space that did not cure and you can spray it out with water and there will be an opening there to squeeze your ink through the mesh. So now that we came up with the two layers, the monotype background layer and the heron foreground layer, we expose two screens. From there, you print all of the background layer first and then print the foreground layer on top using a registration process so that your image lines up perfect each time. After I printed some of these prints at school, Alexa and I decided to further develop the process in her studio. Once we had screens ready at her studio with our imagery, Alexa created a specific pigmented blue ink to use as the beautiful heron layer on top of the monotype layer. She's a master at making pigmented watercolors and inks. Since we were both mixed media watercolor artists, it was only right that we incorporated watercolor into this project somehow. We decided to use watercolor to print that first monotype layer of the screen. I'm told to just watercolor right on top of this screen. We'll see what happens. We did this by directly painting watercolor paint onto the screen and letting it dry. Once painted on the screen, you can use a transparent extender base to re-wet the watercolor on your screen. This is a jelly-like substance that will moisten the watercolor on the screen and therefore you can pull it through just like you would ink. Considering we painted directly on the screen with watercolor, this means everywhere the watercolor washes were placed on the screen is retained when pulling that watercolor through the screen. This is something you'll notice right away when looking at the prints. Considering we are applying the watercolor directly to the screen, it's different every time. And when letting the water run on top of the screen, the watercolor works in ways that you can't control. It worked perfect to create this natural fluidity in the background that represents the water and the murkiness that these herons go through every day. We've all been through a lot this past year, and if there's any animal that we can take inspiration from, I believe it's the blue heron. They're truly a symbol of empowerment, self-determination, and resilience. We hope this video gave you a good understanding of all the work that went into these prints and some of the process behind it. A sincere thank you from Alexa and I. We put a lot of work into this collaboration and are so excited to share it with you. So let us know if there's anything you'd like to see from us in the future. We'd like to do more prints like this. We hope that you connect to something in this print as we do. And thank you so much for your support. The day after finalizing these prints with Alexa, coincidentally, my mother had found a colony of heron nests along the Kalamazoo River. So naturally, we went to check it out and we got some amazing video footage of these herons, which was so perfect I wanted to share with you today in this video. I hope you enjoy.